Tombstone, Arizona was founded in 1879 by prospector Ed Schieffelin in what was then Pima County, Arizona Territory. It became one of the last boom towns in the American frontier. The town grew significantly into the mid-1880s as the local mines produced 40 to 85 million in silver bullion. The town was established on Goose Flats, a mesa above the Goodenough Mine. Its population grew from 100 to around 14,000 in less than seven years. Big Nose Kate's Saloon was once the Grand Hotel, the original building built in 1881. Mary Catherine Hirony Cummings, popularly known as Big Nose Kate, was a Hungarian-born American outlaw, gambler, prostitute, and longtime companion and common-law wife of gambler and gunfighter Doc Holliday. Tough, stubborn, and fearless, she was educated, but chose to work as a prostitute due to the independence it provided her. She is the only woman with whom Holliday is known to have had a relationship. Big Nose Kate Saloon haunted? Many people indeed believe it is. From seeing ghostly soiled doves or ladies of the night and phantom cowboys drinking and raising hell to one individual known as the Swamper. Swamper was a handyman for the Grand Hotel, the former establishment of the location. He was a friendly man who lived in a small room in the basement of the hotel. Labeled a treasure hunter, it is believed he dug tunnels under the hotel searching for treasure. He's been sighted often and been known to touch and poke people. Moaning sounds are heard as well. The Birdcage Theater opened in 1881. It was owned by Lottie and Billy Hutchinson. Hutchinson, a variety performer originally intended to present respectable family shows. But the economics of Tombstone didn't support their aspirations. They soon began offering baser entertainment that appealed to the rough mining crowd. The walls of the birdcage were riddled with gunshot holes from shootings by gunfighters of the American frontier. The birdcage was open 24 hours a day and was the scene of at least 16 gun and knife fights over the years. By the time the doors were shut permanently in 1889, there were 140 bullet holes in the walls and ceiling. There were 12 balcony boxes where prostitutes worked. The birdcage's ladies of the night plied their trade in cribs, some of which were suspended from the ceiling. 14 cribs also lined the sides of the gambling hall, seven on each side of the room. The ladies drew the drapes while entertaining their clients with champagne, kisses, and other favors of their trade. The longest poker game in history was played in the basement of the theater. Those who wished to play had to buy in for $1,000 up front. Among the notable people who played in this particular game were George Hurst, Diamond Jim Brady, Adolphus Bush, Doc Holliday, Bat Masterson, and Wyatt Earp. The poker game was played continuously 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It continued from 1881 to 1889 for a total of eight years. Is the Birdcage Theater haunted? Spirits said to roam the theater include those of former performers, gamblers, and even victims of violence. Reports of a lady in a red dress, believed to be a former prostitute or common, a fandom gambler who moves cards on tables. There are many sightings of a prostitute named Margarita, who was murdered by another prostitute over a dispute for a man. Then there is the enigmatic lady in white, seen frequently by many. Numerous employees have had encounters with this spectral beauty, passing through rooms or descending stairwells without acknowledging the living around her. Unexplained events are the norm here. The gunfight at the OK Corral was a gunfight that lasted less than a minute between lawmen led by Virgil Arp and members of a loosely organized group of outlaws called the Cowboys that occurred on October 26, 1881. It is generally regarded as the most famous gunfight in the history of the American Old West. On one side were Deputy U.S. Marshal and Town Marshal Virgil Earp, 
His two brothers and special policemen Morgan and Wyatt Earp and temporary policeman Doc Holliday. Their opponents, Cowboys Billy Claiborne, brothers Ike and Billy Clanton, and brothers Tom and Frank McClory. The gunfight was the result of a long simmering feud. Virgil made the decision to enforce a city ordinance prohibiting carrying weapons in town and to disarm the Cowboys. About 30 shots were fired in 30 seconds. The gunfight left Cowboys Billy Clanton and the McClory brothers dead. Virgil, Morgan Earp, and Doc Holliday were all wounded. The McClory brothers and Billy Clanton are all buried in Booth Hill Cemetery. Is the OK Corral haunted? The OK Corral is said to be haunted by the cowboys and lawmen. Visitors witness various poltergeists throughout the property. Apparitions of men in cowboy attire are the most frequent sightings appearing with their guns drawn. The specter of a tall, thin man in a flat-brimmed hat has been sighted. Is this Virgil? Cold spots are often reported as well as the sound of phantom horses. On July 1st, 1897, another killing happened on East Allen Street, near the OK Corral site. Two ranchers who hated each other finally had it out. William Green shot Justice Jim Burnett as a consequence of their feud over water rights. Both shared the river. Green had dammed up the river. Burnett hired a man to blow up the dam. Green's daughter and her friend were drowned in the rushing water. Justice Jim Burnett's apparition is clearly seen entering the old office building behind the OK Corral and walking down the street near the OK Corral. Boothville Graveyard is a small graveyard of at least 250 interments located in Tombstone. Also known as the Old City Cemetery, the graveyard was used after 1883 only to bury outlaws and a few others. Boot Hill refers to the number of men who died with their boots on. Among a number of pioneer Boot Hill cemeteries in the Old West, Tombstone is among the best known. Originally called Boot Hill Cemetery, the graveyard was founded in 1878. After a new city cemetery was built elsewhere, the old cemetery stopped accepting new burials in about 1883, save for very few exceptions. The most famous burials in Tombstone's Boothville are those of Billy Clanton and Tom and Frank McClory, losers in the OK Corral gunfight with the Earps and Doc Holliday. Most of Booth Hill's burials are from deaths between 1879 and 1883. Today, hundreds of thousands of visitors come to Tombstone. Boot Hill is either the first place they stop or the last site they visit on their way home. Like the city of Tombstone, Boot Hill is filled with history and legends. Is Booth Hill Graveyard Haunted? The following photograph was captured in 1996 by Ike Clinton, a descendant of the O.K. Corral Clintons. Clinton shot this photograph of a friend in the graveyard who wanted a picture of himself dressed up in period clothing in the Old West. The photo was shot in black and white to give it an old look. Look just to the right of Ike's friend and you'll see a person which appears to have no legs or is coming out of a grave. Some people think it looks like a little boy, some say an old man, or even an old lady. What do you think? If you look carefully, the person in the background appears to be holding a knife. Two weeks after this photo was shot, there was an effort to recreate it. It could not be recreated. Recreated images displayed full bodies with legs visible. The figure in the background in the original photograph also appears on the negative.
We decided to do a little bit of exploring around Tombstone, and one of the first locations we had the pleasure to visit was Big Nose Kate Saloon. Went in and the music was good, the food was wonderful, and the scenery very nice. And from there we left and explored the streets of Tombstone, which is really surreal. It's um, quite creepy at night, as you can see. And um, we had a good time just kind of wandering around. Oh, we ended up back at Big Kate's for some more um, drinks and beverages, which were absolutely delicious. From there, we ventured out into a field. We decided to put a black light on a scorpion, and as you can see, it was quite impressive, um, the glow it had. Apparently, there are chemicals that make a scorpion so rave ready. They're in their outer layer or cuticle of its exoskeleton. And under a black light, it actually exposes them. It makes them glow. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. We enjoyed that very much. And the next morning, we got up fairly early, headed over to the OK Corral, and watched a live performance of the shootout from 1881. If you're in Tombstone, you must see the OK Corral. You simply must. You cannot miss that. And afterwards, we were able to pose and get some photographs with the staff, the actors. A lot of fun. I highly recommend it. And here is the Birdcage Theater. This was the highlight, the main purpose of our trip to Tombstone, Arizona. The Birdcage Theater, it was so many things. It was a brothel, a saloon, a gambling hall, a venue for entertainment, so many things. And it has such a long history and a violent history at that. We made the trip to Tombstone, Arizona for the purpose of investigating the Birdcage Theater. And so, a few days before our investigation was to kick off, we did a tour of the Birdcage Theater, which you can see. Wonderful place. So much history here at the Birdcage Theater. I mean, you had people in here like Curly Bill Brocious, Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Virgil Earp, Johnny Ringo, Ike Clanton, and on and on and on. At least, at least 26 people lost their lives at the theater due to a variety of things. Could be a tragic fall during a show, heated discussions, accompanied by shootings, mainly while playing poker, or arguments, alcohol. There were a number of prostitutes. Many of those committed suicide out of sheer desperation. There were a lot of people that died inside the Birdcage Theater. We were told that the Great Hall is the most haunted area of the theater. The smell of cigar smoke, whiskey, it's a common occurrence here. Some visitors have heard laughing and singing, disembodied voices, the sound of um, rolling dice, cards being shuffled. say it's a heavy feeling of despair in certain areas and there have been numerous apparitions that have been sighted 
in old-fashioned clothing. In the basement, objects have a tendency to disappear and reappear again. It's said that in the wine cellar, there's a ghost of a woman in old-fashioned clothes. She's often seen as well as a desperate man. He seems to be sad and confused and seems to be looking for someone. I mean, this was a wonderful place to investigate. Well worth the trip out to Tombstone. And so we are going to share a little bit of our data captured via the spirit box. Do you want me to leave? 